Day two was an action-packed day. Probably had our plate far too full, anticipating between five and six passes for the day. We started off in Barclay East, heading for Clifford to get to the Auto Duplessis Pass. The morning started off very cold, leaving Barclay at about zero degrees, with the bikes busy warning us of black ice. Temperatures eventually would drop to about minus three once we got onto the dirt or district roads. On day one, we actually had planned to come into Barclay and refuel before setting off for this trip. But alas, once getting to Barclay, we found that 95 octane fuel was in scarce supply. And from what we could gather or what we could glean from the people in Barclay is that the only place that likely would have 95 octane was Elliot. So I set off with a range of around 140 kilometers. And um, that proved to be a bit testing as these roads continued for a very long time before we finally got to Elliot. Later on in the video you'll see some of my tactics to try and extend my range. Another item that we made a bit of a slip up on was setting off from Barclay with our luggage as we were going to roads for the next two nights. And that meant that I had a bag on my pillion which limited my range of motion. This proved to be a bit troublesome going down Otus especially with the slippery mud that we encountered later on in the pass. But it also counted strongly against us when we tackled one of the more technical passes later on in the day. That will probably be in either part three or four of day two. Auto Duplessis pass from the Clifford side was actually pleasant. We were rather surprised at how easy it was to get up to the top of the pass from this side. Um, the roads were in really good condition, imagine mainly because this was an area that was used by farmers. But um, we would soon find out that the other side of Otis is a little different from this side. Today it started off brilliantly, we had got to the top of Autos and were very excited with how quickly we had got there and with relatively low effort. The vistas were amazing, with cloud cover down in the valley below, sort of hiding what was to come. With the true distance to Elliot uncertain, so began my feeble attempts to conserve fuel, descending down the top of Autos in neutral with the engine off. All that can be heard is the jingles from the motor radical top box. These rattles would only progressively get worse as our trip continued. With what was to come around the corner, it became necessary to start the engine just in case I needed some power to get away from things, and also to use the engine braking. At 
At this stage, it was starting to become evident that having my luggage behind me was severely limiting my range of motion. This wasn't immediately an issue, but as we descended down the pass and the pass got more steep and more rutted with rocks every so often and later on very slippery mud, this would become a problem. As with most descents or downhills, I found the best method of attack was to simply leave the bike in gear and sort of let the bike hang off of the rear wheel with the engine doing the braking for me. This provided me with a lot more control and if I needed to go a little bit faster I simply accelerated. Um, at times I did have to use the rear brake and obviously the front brake. However, as we got down into the more muddy sections the front brake became far more treacherous and almost a, no longer an option. In retrospect, I have to admit that I would have preferred to actually come up the pass rather than go down it. With the muddy sections and the rocky little sections, it would have been far more fun on the bike than just simply descending at a slow pace. At this stage I'd sort of been lulled into a false sense of happiness as we were descending rather rapidly and the surface was great, but that was soon to change. It was at this point that I was introduced to the nice greasy mud that seemed to form under these trees or the areas that got the least sunlight during the day. This section wasn't terrible but I could really feel the wheels slipping. Alas, I don't have the video of where I almost went playing in the bushes as a result of a lovely mud patch. Shortly after this section it got exceptionally muddy and I had a few hair raising moments. Um, later on in the pass, just before we turned left towards Elliot, we also came across a mud puddle where 4x4s had obviously played and dug huge holes. This also proved to be a little bit of a testing area.
any traps. Instead of going straight onto the main road, we opted to take a left turn, take another dirt road to Elliot. This road proved to be slightly shorter and was in good condition and provided us with exceptional views. Now with fuel being a serious concern, I was back to freewheeling down hills where I could. In closing, we did manage to get to Elliot with around 10 k's of range left on my tank and we were able to find 95 octane at just one of the garages in the area. This garage would prove to be our favourite garage for the weekend. We also managed to find one pump in Lady Grey that had 95. Beyond that, none of the small towns had 95 octane. Not Oogie, nor McClear. <laughs>